This is a demonstration of the Vault America availability platform. So the platform allows you to use Amazon Web Services as a DR environment for your VMware environment. So if your VMware environment is a primary site, the software automatically uses AWS as your secondary site for disaster recovery. So what you're looking at here is the UI for the virtual appliance that's launched into VMware in your data center and it connects to vCenter. The nice thing about this product is that you can with a single VM download and install inside VMware. The product can be used to manage multiple customers and multiple customer DR environments from a single pane of glass. So what you're looking at here is a UI view of all different customers and their multiple deployments of uh, the product for managing DR. So once you're inside each uh, environment, you can simply click into each tile and it goes into the customer's specific environment. And at any point in time, you can change customers from one to another. So if you have a use case in a managed service provider where you have a knock, you can use this to monitor DR for your customers. When you first install the product, the very first thing that you do is to provide some basic information to set up the product. Like I mentioned, it's a single VM download as an OVA. And once it's downloaded into vCenter, you log in into the screen and provide some basic information about your environment. First, you provide the vCenter credentials. You provide AWS credentials. Now, these AWS credentials are either owned by the customer who owns AWS or by a managed service provider who wants to manage AWS on behalf of their customers. You also provide some basic networking information that the product automatically discovers once it's connected to VMware and also some basic storage information. Once it's connected to VMware, it gathers the storage information and the product uses local cache storage to manage data which it holds on-prem as well as what it replicates to the cloud. Once you provide this basic information, the information is summarized and the install process itself just takes 10 minutes. So it's fully orchestrated. You don't need to have any prerequisites in AWS besides just owning an account. And then the software automatically installs a new VM in the cloud inside AWS, creates the necessary security and networking rules, and creates the environment so that you have a very secure point-to-point -point connection between two VMs, one on-premise and one in the cloud, so that now you can run DR operations. The way DR works is actually very straightforward. The main way that disaster recovery works in the product is through a function called groups. You can create a group very easily. Groups allow you to take VMs which require the same SLA. For example, the time at which you want to protect them or the consistency requirements of VMs and stick them in a specific group. So you could have a group, for example, the domain controllers in them. You could have a group with a specific protection which takes place at the same time every day. You could have a multi-tier application in a group. Right? So these are different ways to assign a policy to VMs you want to protect for DR. Once you create the group, you can name the group uh, that you like, specify a start time of when you want to protect them, and specify a frequency, which goes all the way from one hour to 24 hours a day. Aggressive, more aggressive protection schedules uh, faster than one hour are also supported, um, but that's a separate admin function in order to set that. In addition, the group also allows you to specify a domain, which says to the software, that the VMs in the group are domain controllers. And domain controllers are treated specially by the software, especially when it's going to be failed over into the cloud. And we'll get into that a bit later. So once you create a group and assign a policy, the product works very simply. All you have to do is look up the VMs that you care about. The product is automatically discovering VMs from the vCenter environment. And once you select them, you add them to the group. Now, the product now at this point automatically schedules the protection of these VMs based on the SLA that you set up in the group policy, and you can actually walk away from the system because it starts to protect them at that schedule. Let's uh, switch over to one of the customers who already have protections that have happened, so you can see the next phase of it. So in this example we're showing you, here are four separate groups that are created in this customer environment. 
They have a domain controller group and a few VMs in other groups. Each of these VMs, once uh, protected, start to show you more details about the VM in terms of the number of disks in the, um, in the VM, the networking that the VM has, and how the network addresses are mapped between the source IP that's discovered for the VM and then the target IPs that are going to be created by the software when they're failed over into the cloud. So we have two IP addresses here, one for test failover and another one for production failover. In addition to groups and creating groups and assigning policies for protection, the very easy way to kick off a failover is by simply selecting VMs and executing an action on them. The product supports two failover modes by default. One's called test failover and another one's called production failover. The main difference between test and production failover is that in test, all we're really doing is creating an isolated environment in a specific network in the cloud so that a user can log into the systems, verify the integrity of the machines, and make sure that their applications are working properly. Once the test is done, they can simply complete a test by this action here, and the software will automatically orchestrate the removal of any resources created during the test. Now, while test happens, all VMs on-premise are continuing to be protected based on the original SLA that was selected before or when the group was created. In production failover, the main difference is that now the software realizes that the primary machine that's running is now in the cloud because production failover is a statement to the software to say that we are not protecting anything on-prem anymore because we have declared a failure and then the machine is now running in the cloud. So the software automatically orchestrates failing over the machines into the cloud and starts to protect them in the cloud. And the reason that's important is because when you want to execute failback to bring the machines back from AWS back into your VMware environment, the software will automatically compute the changes between the machine at the time it has failed over into the cloud to the time when you want to bring it back. So it understands deltas on the way back from the cloud back to your data center. A few other features that the product has, you can stage the ordering of machines that you want to fail over. So you can go across groups, select multiple machines with different SLAs, and then go to the group stage feature. So the stage feature allows you to simply drag and drop the order in which you want VMs to come up. So in some cases, you may want the domain controllers up first or some app servers first or communications machines first followed by other tier two applications. So the staging feature allows you to set up the order before executing the actions on the machines. The other feature the product has is called failover plans. So the product comes by default with two types of plans. There's a test plan and a production plan. So the plans specify what the IP ma ad address mapping is between the source IP and the target IP address in the cloud. So it automatically discovers the source subnet, maps it to a target subnet, both for test and for production. Additionally, the other important feature that the failover plans have is the ability for a user to specify how they want to scale the machines when they want to run them in the cloud. So because in cloud computing, compute cycles cost um, money on an hourly basis, you can very simply select a dial and say how you want the machines to come up in the cloud. So as an example, for test, you can say, I want to bring up the machines in the cloud at a 50% capacity so that I'm not spending a lot of money while I'm testing. Versus in production, I can say, I want to either oversubscribe the capacity of the VMs in the cloud so that I could run the machines in production. And this is a very simple dial. You don't need to do anything in AWS. The software automatically manages that. Additionally, you also have the ability to protect machines in the cloud for crash um, operations. So if a machine actually fails in the cloud by enabling crash protection, automatically the system orchestrates protecting the disks on those machines on a regular basis based on that same SLA that you'd selected when the group was created. You can also specify the domain service name of the domain and the domain name server in the cloud so that now all machines that are brought up in the cloud point to specific domain controllers in the cloud. Additionally, the product also provides more detailed overview of tasks that are completed. So at any point in time, you can go and look at the status of tasks and it's got a faceted search so you can see 
what the different status of the machines are based on the type of operation that they're actually running. So for instance, you can click into a specific machine and then see all the steps that the product has been executing against the machine and how much time each one took for the last three runs. So those are the functions of DR specifically in the product. And then it's got some infrastructure features as well. These include bandwidth throttling so that the product can automatically be efficient about when it uses the maximum amount of bandwidth allocated. During business hours, you can say that you want to use only 50% of the network versus during weekends and evenings, you want to use much more of the bandwidth. In terms of storage, the system automatically manages how much storage is used both for cache online and in the cloud as well. And it also gives the user, the operator, an ability to change the quota of how much storage is ever used at any point in time so that it's not something that the software is automatically going to continue to use or, or grab at any point in time. It will look at the quota and based on the quota allocate storage to the system both on-premise and as well in the cloud. All data that's stored on-premise or in the cloud is always compressed into you by the software. So that's all handled uh, in, internally by the application and the technology. The system also has the ability to create alerts. So you can easily create SMTP alerts and apply them to different levels, either info, warning, or critical, and a recipient or notification. And via SMTP relays, the information is related to that specific uh, email address. So you can easily create that. Additionally, there are some initial um, information about the reports that are generated as the product is running including things that uh, such as the information from AWS, gathering information around the compute storage and networking systems in AWS to see that um, they are still reliable and everything is up. And it provides some basic cost information to see how much compute storage and networking are being used by the product at any point in time. So these are all the functions of the product. And this is uh, Walt America availability. Thank you very much.